New Zealand is a country that still has a sizeable rail network, but very few lines see anything other than freight trains. Indeed, the two cities we'll be featuring today are the only cities in the country that retain commuter trains in any similar format to those in Glasgow, Hamburg, Chicago and Melbourne. Auckland and Wellington are at opposite ends of the 681 km long North Island main trunk. Both cities have electric trains running most of the services, though Wellington has had them since the late 1930s, while Auckland's network didn't get electrified until 2014. The Northern Explorer is a passenger train connecting Auckland and Wellington, though it has been out of action since August 2021 and isn't set to return until September 2022. This video is not an in-depth explanation of each network's history, nor is it meant to be about the history of the Matangi and AM units. Instead, this is an independent reviewer comparing the differences between these two networks, more specifically the trains, station facilities and service patterns. The Wellington network uses 1700 volt DC electrification, with the motive power being the FP slash FT or Matangi class. This is a fleet of 83 two-car units that were built between 2010 and 2016 by Hyundai Rotem of South Korea, and here is an example of what they sound like. Meanwhile, the Auckland system uses 25kV AC and the CAF-built AM class, of which 57 examples were built between 2013 and 2015. A second batch of 15 were built in 2019 and 2020, thus bringing the total up to 72 units. Unlike the Matangis, the AMs are all 3-car units. Regarding the motor sound, I think the AMs are a little better in that regard than Wellington's units. One of the most notable differences between these units is that the AMs don't have gangway connections on the cab ends, whereas the Matangi units do, although those ones are staff only. Both units have open gangways between coaches, meaning passengers can easily walk between them, unlike the older trains they replaced. As is often the case for commuter trains, neither the Matangi nor AM units have onboard toilets. In the case of these units, the longest journey you could possibly take on any of them would only be 60 minutes, that being the run from Wellington to Waikanae. As for the onboard experience, I think the Matangi units win this round. In my opinion, they have a brighter and more colourful interior, while the AMs just have bright white walls offset by those questionable blue seats. I say questionable because I've always thought the AM seats are very stiff with almost no padding. Matangi seats are a little better in that regard. Both classes include low floor areas for wheelchairs, bikes and prams. These sections also feature priority seating, which is denoted by the green seats on the Matangi units, and if my memory serves me right, just stickers on the AMs. The FT trailer coach on each Matangi unit has bright green doors to denote the location of that wheelchair space and priority seating. Up in Auckland, the stations have markings on the platform to denote where the wheelchair space will be when the train stops. Regardless of my personal preference, both the AM and Matangi units are overall pleasant to ride on, 
and they present an easy and relaxing way of getting around their respective cities. Tickets are one of the many areas in which these networks differ from each other. In Auckland, they have ticket machines and 80 hop card readers at every station. Some of them, like Puhinui and Britomart, also have ticket barriers controlling access to the platforms. As such, they do not sell tickets on the train. Meanwhile in Wellington, they don't have ticket machines at all. You have to buy your ticket either from ticket offices at the major stations or on board the trains. Though snapper cards, basically Wellington's 80 hop equivalent, have been trialled on the Johnsonville line since November last year, and indeed the last time I was in the capital I was hearing announcements that Snapper will soon be rolled out to the rest of the electrified network. As for the fare prices, it's entirely dependent on how long your journey is. For more information I'll leave links to the AT and MetLink pages in the description. I must stress that I have no commercial connection to Auckland Transport and MetLink. Now for the service patterns, and suffice to say they are very different from each other. The vast majority of Auckland services see the AMs calling at all stations on their runs to Papakura, Manuko, or Swanson. Meanwhile, the new market to Onehunga service skips two stations on its route, as proven by the clip I showed earlier. Auckland's off-peak and weekend services typically run every 20 minutes in each direction, with an increase to every 10 minutes at peak times but that only applies for the southern, eastern and western lines. Onehunga services can only run every 30 minutes due to the limited capacity of the single track Onehunga branch. As for Wellington, their off-peak trains on the Kapiti and Hutt Valley lines also run every 20 minutes. The Johnsonville line, on the other hand, runs every 30 minutes most of the week, with an increase to every 15 minutes in the morning and evening peak. As for the Melling branch, that service is weekdays only but even then it's a pretty inconsistent frequency. Services to Melling can vary from every 20 minutes to half hourly and even hourly, so in this case it's especially important to check the timetable before you go on the train. Another major difference between the Auckland and Wellington networks is that the latter operates peak time express services, or rather, trains that skip several stations while leaving others to stop at the local stations. And what I mean is this, at peak times the Kapiti and Hutt Valley services run intense schedules where trains coming down from Waikanae and Upper Hutt stop at all stations for the first third or half of their route. Then they'll become an express service once they reach a certain major station, which is usually Porirua and Taita respectively. In the case of the Hutt Valley Line, their trains will also call at Waterloo and Petone after becoming express trains, while the Waikanae trains don't stop anywhere between Porirua and Wellington. Of course, this doesn't apply to off-peak or weekend services, which call at all stations. Alongside the fast trains, Metlink also runs stopping trains from Porirua and Taita to Wellington. 
these patterns are all reversed for the evening peak. And as for weekend services, both the Kapiti and Hutt Valley lines just run half hourly. Besides the electric services, Auckland and Wellington both have extra regional services to other towns or cities. These are Te Huia and the Wairara Rapa connection respectively, running from Auckland to Hamilton and Wellington to Masterton. Both services use refurbished ex-British rail coaches hauled by DFB class diesel locomotives. Now I'd like to briefly mention each city's main station. For Auckland, it's Britomart, which is an underground station with five platforms that opened in 2003, replacing the old Beach Road station that was about one kilometre from the city centre. Wellington Station, on the other hand, is a large above-ground station with nine platforms that opened in 1937. I much prefer Wellington Station simply because it's got a nice open atmosphere and much more intensive train activity, especially with the addition of those locomotive hauled services to Palmerston North and Masterton. As for Britomart, the only trains you'll see there these days are the EMUs, as the station has been electric only since July 2015. Before 2015, Britomart was served by either ex-Perth ADK and ADL diesel multiple units, or DC and DFB locomotives hauling rebuilt ex-British Rail Mark II coaches. The ongoing City Rail Link project will see Britomart converted into a through station, alongside an extension of the underground line out to Mount Eden, complete with two new stations at Aotea and Kauranga Hape. This project should be finished in the next two or three years. Something I've forgotten to mention this whole time is the Papakura to Pukekohe shuttle, currently the last diesel service on the Auckland Suburban network, not counting Te Huia. The ADL units that run this service are due for retirement in either August or September, after which electrification will finally be extended to Pukekohe. Speaking of which, I recently made a compilation of my ADL footage from April 2022. Feel free to check it out if you haven't already done so. Now that I've explained a fair bit about the trains in Auckland and Wellington, and if you've been on either system yourself, feel free to let us know what you think of them in the comments. Wellington has to be my favourite of the two, because of the wider variety of motive power and a more relaxed atmosphere. Not to mention the contrasting urban, rural and even coastal scenery.
And with that, we finally reached the end of the video. Before I go, I'd like to shout out Reese from the RM Transit channel, who was a big inspiration for me to make this one. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, and I dare say he'd appreciate you checking out what he has to offer. That goes for me and my channel as well. So in the adapted words of the Tim Traveller, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again soon.